Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Paula. Oh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight. I've got to do some antique collecting. Well, I don't like it either, but I have to go through with it if it kills me. Oh, don't give up hope, Angel. It may at that. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the burning bridges. It's early afternoon in Manhattan, and in New York's Chinatown, a rugged-looking gent named George Bridges pushes his way through a mob of Chinese and heads for a small shop. The legend Kessler's Imports is on the store window. Yes, sir? Can I help you? I don't think so. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. Well, Mr. Kessler doesn't like to be disturbed unless it's very important. Well, if it isn't, I've traveled 3,000 miles for nothing. My name is George Bridges. Oh, well, just a second. Yeah, what is it, Joan? I'm sorry to bother you, Julian, but there's a gentleman out here to see Mr. Kessler. His name is George Bridges. Never heard of him. Oh, tell him I'm a friend of Oppenheimer in San Francisco. Yes, I heard of Julian. All right, Joan, show the gentleman in. If you'll just follow me, please. I'd love to. Uh, Do come in, Mr. Bridges. Thanks. That will be all, Joan. Yes, sir. Oh, this is a great pleasure. Well, this is my associate, Robert Julian. Glad to know you. Likewise. Do sit down. Thanks. And what can I do for you? I'm interested in buying a Hoshin Buddha. The Hoshin Buddha? Yeah, I understood you had one for sale. And where do you understand that from? Oppenheimer. Oh, he uh, told me to give this to you. Dear Kessler, this will serve to introduce George Bridges. He's interested in completing his collection of Buddhas. Anything you can do for him will be appreciated, Gustav Oppenheimer. Uh, Julian, don't we have another letter from Oppenheimer on the files? Yeah. Get it like a good boy. Uh, What do you think this one is, a forgery? It never occurred to me, Mr. Bridges, but now that you mention it, it might bear investigation. Have you got it, Julian? Yeah. Uh, What do you think? Looks okay to me. Well, now that we've got that settled, let's get down to cases. What do you want for the Hoshin Buddha? Uh, this presupposes I have one for sale. Well, if you haven't, I'm wasting my time. Uh, just a second, Mr. Bridges. You realize a Hoshin Buddha comes very high. There are only four in existence. This one was uncovered during the Boxer Rebellion. All right, never mind the history lesson. What's your price? $250,000. You must think you're dealing with a chump. Perhaps you'd like to see a picture of it. I believe we have I one. don't have to. It figures from the size it couldn't hold more than five kilos of this stuff. Pardon? Look, Kessler, let's not do any more fencing, huh? I'll pay 70000 You're trying to take advantage of me. You realize what five kilos would yield after cutting? 70000 Take it or leave it. What do you think, Julian? Take it. Very well, Mr. Bridges. I assume you have the money on you. I, um... Uh... Got it at my hotel. When can you make delivery? Where are you staying? At the Brighton. Under what name? My own. Is that safe? Do I tell you how to run your business? <laughs> You're so right. I suppose we make it for tomorrow at 12. Okay, I'll see you then. Good day, sir. A nice meeting you, Julian. Yeah. Friendly guy, ain't he? Well, in my lifetime, I've discovered, Julian, that... What's the matter? Something just occurred to me. You think he's a phony? If you step here in the corner, I'd like to show you something. What's up? Take a look at my desk. You notice anything strange? No. Well, you're not very observant, Julian. You left the key on the intercom down. I what? Mm Mm-hmm. Who is that front? The girl. You think she heard? There's one way to find out. But Joan, dear... Yes, Mr. Kessler. Would you come in here? I have an errand for you. Of course. She heard. What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind, Julian. But when I do, believe me, you'll be the first to know.
Well, hello. Uh, how do you do? I, uh, I'm looking for a Mike Waring. Well, you couldn't have picked a better place. Come in. Thank you. Sit down, Miss... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I don't believe I caught your name. It's Calvin, Joan Calvin. Mm-hmm. Try the sofa. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Oh, don't be frightened, darling. It is only a man's apartment. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I did. Uh, can I offer you a Smirnoff martini? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. You see the vodka I in it? I came here on business, Mr. Waring. I see. Well, you can't rule a man out for trying. What's your problem? Well, that's just it. I, I don't know. Come again? Well, you see, I work for an importing firm, and this morning my employer had a conference with a man from San Francisco. I don't know how it happened, but the intercom key was down. So you couldn't help eavesdropping, hmm? Well, yes. They were talking about something called the Hoshin Buddha. It, it dates back to the Wang Dynasty. This man was going to buy it for $70,000. Well, what's wrong with that? Art objects come high. I know. But I checked with the library, and there never was a Wang Dynasty. Oh, no wonder it's so rare. What's your employer's name? I... Well, I can't tell you. I may be doing him an injustice. Now, look, Angel... Oh, please don't press me, Mr. Waring. <laughs> What would you have me do? Well, right after this gentleman left, my employer called me into his office and gave me this. Grand Central Claim Department, not responsible for goods left over 30 days. Mm-hmm. You think this is for the Buddha? Uh-huh. Can you describe it for me? Oh, I can do better. I've got a picture. Uh, well, I've seen a million like this in Chinatown. Well, then why should this one be worth so much money? I don't know, Angel. Let me have the claim check. Well, I... Where do you live? At the Marlborough. All right, go home and wait. I'll be by as soon as I pick this thing up. Attention, please. The Chicago Limited, due to arrive at 427, will be... Eight hey, buddy. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, I'd like to pick up this parcel, please. Uh, 41776. The Missouri yeah, just Express a leaving for Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Chicago, and points west. Now loading at gate 7. Have your ticket. Hey, what's ready, taking so please? long? All right, keep your shirt on. I got it. Now, it's a funny thing. I remember checking this parcel for a guy this morning. You don't look nothing like him. He sent me to pick it up. Got any identification? Sure. Well, let's do. Michael Waring, 419 East. Yeah. Uh, sorry I troubled you, Mr. Waring, but company rules, you know. All right, sure, that's all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's okay. The Missouri Express, uh, leaving for Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, uh, Chicago, uh, and... Excuse me, fella, you, uh, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a match? Seven. Yeah, sure. Mm, thanks. It's all right, keep the book. You're a real generous type kid, aren't you? What? Maybe I can do something for you. I doubt it. You never know. How about a lift? No, thanks. I'll take a cab. Come on, fella. You ought to know why I'm keeping this hand in my pocket. Just walk on like nothing happened. Why? Is something going to? Will, if you don't behave yourself. Hold it. <laughs> well, make up your mind. I just came to the conclusion it'd be silly to waltz you all the way through this joint. Let's see what's behind that door. Huh? Well, can't you read? Don't get gay. Just pick them up and lay them down. Okay, Corporal. Well, nice and quiet here. Eh? Well, I got a feeling it won't be for long. I got the same feeling. Where'd you get that parcel? What's it to you? Look, fella, don't get smart. Just lay it down on the floor. Now, back up a couple of steps. Oh, that's fine. Now, tell me something about yourself. Uh, sure, Julian. What did you call me? Julian, isn't that your name? How'd you know that? I got a great memory for faces. You were pointed out to me about nine years ago in Detroit when you were running with the Purple Mob. And what do they call you? Mike Waring. Where'd you get that claim check? I found it in the street. I asked you something. And I answered it. Joan Calvin gave it to you, didn't she? Look, Julian, I think I've been very patient. I don't know what you want. Get back. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. No. In your place, I'd probably do the same. You see? But then I'm not in your place, and right now I wouldn't change for the world. <coughs> There's one thing I can't stand. It's a wise guy. Well, that's the story, Kessler. 
When Joan didn't show up, I got suspicious. Then I saw this character come up and present the check. How far away were you, Julian? Maybe 30 feet. And from that distance, you knew immediately our little Johnny had sent him? That was very bright of you. I told you I had a hunch. When he picked up the parcel, I knew I was right. And how do you suppose Mr. Waring came to have the claim check? Why don't you ask Joan? Yes, I intend to. Unfortunately, she isn't here. Well, shall we see if the gods have been kind to us? The Hoshin Buddha. Isn't it lovely, Julian? It puts me in mind of a poem I once read. Puts me in mind of our friend George Bridges. He's still waiting, remember? Oh, yes. Uh, Hand me that paperweight. You going to open it now? Yes. Like you, I'm given to hunches. What are you talking about? Paperweight, please. I was wrong. What do you expect? I thought it might be empty. In any event, I think it needs testing. Careful. You don't want to take off. I don't think there's much danger of that. It's sugar. It's what? (laughs) See for yourself. We've been double-crossed. So it would appear. Now, where do you think it came from? Could be that Mike Waring. I don't see how, Julian. By your own admission, he had no time to make a substitution. When did you say you saw him? Around 4.30. And you didn't get back to the shop till seven. It was a quarter of. It's still two and a quarter hours to be accounted for. Look, are you accusing me? What's the old cliche, Julian? If the shoe fits... Look, Kessler, I don't have to take that kind of talk. Still $70,000 worth of merchandise has disappeared. It would be most interesting to know what happened to it. Aren't you forgetting Joan? Suppose she was working with Bridges. It's a possibility. Get up and I'm on the phone in San Francisco and ask him what he knows of the gentleman. Ask him yourself. I'm going over to see that wearing character. I wish you wouldn't. Look, I've got as much at stake in this thing as you have. I'm going to do my own checking. Why not wait to hear what Oppenheimer says? It'll keep. You just let me know what happens. I hope you'll do as much for me. Take care of yourself, Julian. I should hate for anything to happen to you. <laughs> I don't blame you. What? Remember me? (coughs) How could I ever forget? You made quite an impression. And I still got the gimmick that did the trick. (coughs) And you're smoking too much. (coughs) Shut the door. I was hoping I'd seen the last of you. No. Oh, we're going to get real chummy. (coughs) Now, do you want some water? Stay right there. Maybe if I patted you on the back, you... Let go. Come on, drop it. Drop it. Now, kick it in the corner. All right, now you and I are going to have a nice long talk. <laughs> Come on, Julian, get up. We're just starting. I said on your feet. Julian. Julian. Hello, Tony. This is Mr. Waring. Look, be a good kid and call the police. I've got a visitor here who won't leave. No, no, no. It wouldn't do any good for you to talk to him. He's dead. I think we'll just have to wait for the cops. Can you stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, Could you stop in time to save a life? Slippery roads, fogged windshields, poor visibility, all of these factors mean that you must be more alert in following simple safety rules. Always get the feel of the road before you accelerate. Check on your driving habits. Be careful. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. 30 minutes have passed since Mike Waring slugged Robert Julian, only to discover that his man couldn't get off the floor. Now there's no question in Sergeant Corbett's mind, but that our hero packs a deadly wallop. Oh, don't be a chump, Corbett. I didn't kill him. Well, he was alive when you socked him. Yes. Now he's dead. You explain it. What do you make of this? 
The man liked red neckties. Yeah, red shirts, too? Huh? Look under the tie. Notice the blood clot? Where did it come from? No, don't touch him. I just wanted to show you. Well, he was stabbed. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see that letter opener. Oh, don't be a fool. Nothing as wide as a letter opener made this incision. It was probably done by something like a nail file. Five will get you ten. It happened long before he got here. Well, then how did he make it over? Well, with an internal hemorrhage, he could have lived for hours. He might never have even known he was hurt. You said you ran into him earlier today. I did. He took that parcel away from me at Grand Central. Well, then what was the point of the return engagement? I don't know. You suppose your client does? You mean Joan Calvin? Yes. What do you know about her? Uh, everything. She looks like she posed for a Mo Judd hosiery ad. By you, this is everything? Well, isn't it enough? Not for me. Especially with people getting themselves knocked off in your apartment. I guess you're right, Corbett. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll split the assignment two ways. You take care of Julian, I'll take care of Joan. I give you my word, Mr. Waring. I've told you all I possibly can. Well, it ain't nearly enough, Angel. Now, since I met you, the most interesting things have happened. One, I get slugged as soon as I pick up your package. When I come to, I find the same character again waiting for me in my apartment. Well, that's not my fault. How well did you know Julian? I didn't know him at all. Look, Joan, we're dealing with a murder now. We're not playing games. Who do you work for? Paul Kessler. Did Julian work for him, too? Yes. When did you last see him? Well, this morning at work, before Mr. Kessler gave me that claim check. And you haven't seen him since? No. Okay, let's get back to Kessler. How did you get the job? I answered Ned. When was this? Oh, about three weeks ago. Did you notice anything out of line? Nothing, except that they seem to discourage business. Any time a customer would walk in, they'd... Well, I guess the expression is brush him off. Yeah, but there was one customer they didn't slough off. Huh? The boy from San Francisco you heard on the intercom. What was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Come on, Joan, think. No, I... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Bridges. Bridges? Mm -hmm. You remember his first name? Uh, I, I think it was George... You think he killed Julia? Yeah, we'll cross those bridges when we get to the... Uh-oh, what I said. After I see Kessler, I'm going home and wash my mouth out with soap. I'm terribly sorry, sir. We're closed for the day. Maybe it'll pay you to open again. I hardly think so. Well, you never know. I might prove the customer of the year. I'm interested in a Buddha. Well, there's a shop on the corner. No, it doesn't handle this kind. I'm looking for the Ho Shin Buddha. It's supposed to date back to the Wang Dynasty. It must be extremely rare. Yes, extremely. You see, there never was a Wang Dynasty. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, that's because you're 20 miles ahead. Won't you sit down, Mr... Uh... Waring, Mike Waring. Oh? Well, what can I do for you? I told you I'm interested in a Hoshin Buddha. But by your own admission, there is no such thing. Now, strangely enough, there is. Matter of fact, I had my hands on it earlier today. Only someone took it away. Someone named Robert Julian. You know him? Yes, very well. Then you should be interested in learning that he was murdered. I beg your pardon? And you should beg his. He was stabbed to death. Where did this happen? That's what I'd like to know. When was the last time you saw him? At two this afternoon. He was waiting for me at my apartment at nine. Where do you suppose he was in the meantime? I have no idea. I have. I think he was here. Oh, you're mistaken, my friend. Well, that's possible. Happens often enough. By the way, what made that Buddha so valuable? I, I wouldn't know. Yet a girl named Joan Calvin who worked for you was supposed to pick it up. She showed me a picture of it. She did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked like this fellow here. Well, please don't handle the merchandise. Oh, I'm so sorry it slipped. There's nothing in it. What did you expect? Well, I don't know exactly. But you had a customer for it. A man named George Bridges. How does he figure in this? Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a detective? That's right. Then you should tell me. Now listen, Kessler. I'm so sorry. As I said before, it's past our closing hour. That'll be 498, please. Huh? For the Buddha you just destroyed. When you make a mistake, Mr. Waring, you should be prepared to pay for it. 498, please. Kessler Imports. Are you Kessler? 
Yes? George Bridges. Oh, how are you, Mr. Bridges? Not so hot. Your boy didn't show with the merchandise. Oh, there's been an unavoidable delay. Yeah, well, I'm due back on the coast. I got a reservation tomorrow at 8 on the El Capitan. You think you'll be able to deliver before then? It's very problematical. Look, Kessler, there are other dealers in New York. Now, either you want my business or you don't. Oh, I do. But you see, Julian met with an unfortunate accident. Huh? Poor fellow. He was murdered. How'd that happen? I have no idea. But I think a man named Michael Waring does. Uh, well, how does this Waring character affect our deal? <laughs> he doesn't. Just be patient, Mr. Bridges. I'll get to you in time. Come in, fella. The water's fine. Huh? You know, this is the second time this has happened today. Huh? Yes. Yeah, he had a gun, too. You better change your lock. You better change your luck. He wound up murdered. Well, you must be real tough. No, not me. I was scared stiff. Well, what's your name? Or maybe I can guess. Maybe you can. Well, I got a hunch of George Bridges from San Francisco. How'd you know that? I'm psychic. Look, what's your interest in this, Waring? Same as yours. No, it isn't. You're doing business with Kessler? In a manner of speaking. And you ought to know I didn't get the booty you picked up. Hey, wait a minute. You look like the guy in the baggage room. I look like a lot of people. Did you notice what happened to me afterwards? No. I was hijacked. Where's the booty now? I have no idea. Can you get me one? If the price is right. I'll pay 70000 Tell me something, Bridges. What makes that Buddha so valuable? Don't you know? I got an idea, but I'd like to confirm it. You know, Waring, I was right all along. You don't know from nothing. No, but I'm learning. Not nearly enough. If you're smart, you'll start minding your own business. This is my business. A man named Robert Julian was murdered right here. Yeah? Well, if you don't want some of the same treatment, you'll stop sticking your neck out. Now, out of my way. Hey, not so fast. Are you going to move? Now, put the gun away, Bridges. You wouldn't dare use it. A shot would bring down the house. Yes, you're so right. But you forget a gun has two ends. And under proper conditions, one end is as effective as the other. Oh. You see what I mean? Unbelievable as it may sound, accidents on the nation's highways in the last ten years have killed more than 300,000 Americans like you and me. What's more, they have injured no fewer than 11 million men, women, and children, crippling several million of these victims for life. Help to protect your own life and the lives of your family by driving safely. Work for greater highway safety for yourself and for your family in your own community and state. And whenever you take the wheel of your own car, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since Mike entertained George Bridges in his apartment. And this was one Bridges Mike never should have attempted to cross. Oh, oh my head. What's the matter, boy? Can't you take it there anymore? You ought to be used to it by now. Oh, what are you doing here, Sergeant? Well, your elevator boy found you and gave us a buzz. Well, who did it this time? The boy who killed Julian. Huh? Now, look, Corbett, I've got it all figured out. His name is George Bridges. George Bridges? Yes, when you latch on to him, we'll be home. Oh, we will? Yes. Why do you suppose he killed Julian? To get his hands on that boot I told you about. Well, for your information, George Bridges happens to be a treasury agent. You what? He's head of the narcotics division. <laughs> you had him pegged as a killer. Oh, you're a real bloodhound, Mike. I'm going to get you a can of strong heart. Yeah, but if Bridges was a government boy, what did he want with me? Well, you know your talent for butting in. He must have wanted to find out if you were mixed up in this deal. Well, at least I'm making progress. Oh, you're making progress. Yep. I know now that Bridges didn't kill Julian. Oh, you're amazing. Mm-hmm. Let me at that phone. Who are you calling? My client. What? Joan Calvin? Yes. She can put the finger on the guilty party. If she doesn't lose her nerve, we can wrap this up in 15 minutes. Hello? Joan, this is Mike Waring. Oh, I'm so glad you called, Mike. I'm getting frightened. Well, now, there's nothing to worry about, Angel. We'll have this thing solved in minutes if you'll only cooperate. Now, here's what I want you to do. 
Grab a cab and go down to Kessler's shop. But you told me I was fired. Well, I've got a new job for you. Now be a good girl and go right to work. Just a second, please. Uh, Mr. Kessler. You seem surprised, my dear. Well, I expected... Someone else? Well, after all, this is my establishment. Uh, I, I'm afraid I made a mistake. You've made several, my dear. Sit down. No, I'll come back later. I wouldn't think of it. You know, you're a very stupid girl, Joan. What? Really, I've misjudged you completely. Why did you hire Mike Waring? Now, look, Mr. Kessler... I'd be very interested in your reasoning. Of course, I have my own theory. And you're probably right. Mike! Hello, Angel. Almost missed my cue, didn't I? Oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Are we interrupting anything? No, not at all. I thought you were asking Joan why she hired Waring. It's not too important. Well, you're not very flattering. She came to me because she was worried, and she had reason. She was mixed up with several unsavory characters... One of these characters subsequently got himself murdered. Poor Julian. Yes, well, at least his problems are over. Tell me, who do you think did it? I wouldn't know. Oh, now, you must have some idea. <laughs> I'm afraid not. You told me the last time you saw Julian was at 2 o'clock this afternoon. That's right. How was he dressed? He was wearing a blue suit with a, a yellow tie. Well, he's lying. He, he was wearing a red tie. Thanks, Angel. I knew you'd be helpful and... Okay, Sergeant, what are you waiting for? What are you talking about? Well, don't you see who killed Julian? No. Well, who do you suppose dreamed up this double cross? Who's the smart wheel that made all the little cogs go? Well, her? No, him. Really, Mr. Waring? No, really, Mr. Kessler. You did a nice piece of work. This is no time for you to go modest on the people. All right, Sergeant, make like a policeman. I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. What's your problem, little man? Talk about your switches. This is the first time I can remember in this kind of a case where the girl didn't do it. Well, Kessler was your most obvious suspect. Uh, proving that the most obvious suspect is guilty can get you barred from the union. Now, what made you latch on to him? Well, it didn't make sense otherwise. According to Bridges, there was $70,000 worth of junk in that Buddha. Now, I ask you, would a guy like Kessler trust a girl you hardly knew to pick it up? Why should he? Julian was available. Then it occurred to me this whole thing must have been a test and Kessler substituted Buddhas. Only Julian didn't know. No, and before he could find out, Kessler punctured his uh, vanity. Now, does that answer all your questions? Oh, all but one. How do you account for the mistake you made? Where did I make a mistake? Well, here there was a beautiful blonde in the case and you wind up the evening with me. <laughs> now, if that ain't a boner, nothing is. I'm so sorry. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Well, what do you know? You say something, Corbett? <clears throat> no. Then I will. Good night, Sergeant. The Case of the Dirty Dollar. The Case of the Dirty Dollar. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that some people with money to burn often wind up fried. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Howard Reig speaking.